There's a pretty one, Ulysses. Hello booktube, I'm Sean the Book Maniac. Welcome back to my channel. I feel kind of weird about doing a Friday Reads. I think it'll be good for me, therapeutically, to talk about books for a few minutes. Because I haven't been thinking about books for the last 24 hours. I've been glued to the TV, I don't have a TV, but glued to the news since I woke up at 6am local time and found out what was happening in the States. And... I don't have much that's helpful or well thought out to say. I'm now going on about three hours sleep. I woke up at three o'clock this morning and haven't been able to go back to sleep. So hello people, how are you? In fact, here's my first sip of more coffee out of my Prince Harry cup. Some people have, what are those support dogs? I've got my Prince Harry cup. I think that rather than listen to what I have to say because it's not particularly uniting and it's not particularly well thought out it's like a sleep deprived hot take go watch hannah of hannah's books thoughts her of the fabulous npr voiced musings very calming and lovely she i didn't remember that she lived in the washington area so i'll put a link to her video if you haven't seen it when I've heard Biden speak over the past couple of days, I just feel a sense of calmness. He is not going to be a perfect president. Name one that we've ever had, but he will be the best president that we could have had at this time. And I just get such a sense of tempered optimism and deep compassion from the man that if he doesn't do anything else other than enveloping that tortured, torturous confounding nation in that kind of energy for a, a term or two boy that's what's needed so that's what i have to say so let me try to talk books i don't know if i'll maybe i'll get into my friday reads kind of state of mind eventually but let's just go with it shall we i've started a bunch of books and i my brain is too fried to even count them maybe well it was supposed to be six but plus all the buddy reads i think it's more like nine buddy reads first this is the collection of Japanese short stories, Inheritors by Asako Serizawa, Buddy Read with Britta. We did the first story last weekend and I was quite underwhelmed. There were a few things I liked about that story, but it was called Flight, but I, I thought the writing was not that great. And there was an image of tomatoes, wasn't it tomatoes or potatoes or something? You know, me and vegan stuff I, I just don't have a head for details don't have a don't keep it in my memory very long um apples no tomatoes i think anyway it doesn't matter obviously to me it doesn't matter um that could have been brilliant but she kind of botched it so yeah i, I didn't start out very well but I, i'm gonna continue and britta liked it a lot better than me so don't listen to me don't listen to anything i say today people because you know you'll be farther ahead Everything else, certainly in the buddy read department, I think pretty much everything else I have to say today about what I've started is very positive. I'm absolutely loving this. Why would I be even the slightest bit surprised that I was? This short story collection by Alice Munro, Runaway. The first story is the title story, and this is a buddy read with Kendra Winchester, and we just bonded over our Alice Munro love. This was originally published in 2004. I made the mistake of starting this story the same day I started the Asako Serizawa story. And I mean, the comparison was, you shouldn't compare a debut writer to the goddess, but I, did, I couldn't help it. Anyway, yeah, this is starting out fabulously. I think reading only one Alice Munro short story collection a year is not sufficient. And I'm delighted to report that I absolutely loved the first story in Daddy, the new short story collection by Emma Klein. This is a buddy read with Heidi of My Reading Life. I, I liked it a lot better than Heidi did. She didn't dislike it. And I won't speak for her, but I thought it was a really amazing story. What can you do with a general about a middle-aged father whose health is deteriorating and his marriage and his family life is deteriorating and he hadn't been such a good husband and parent and he seems like he's not so bad now but he's never gonna get his family back to connect with him because of the things that he did and it's quite blurry about what he did 
in a way that really worked for me, worked less so for Heidi, which I think she won't care if I say that to you. But I just thought it was a wonderfully blurry story about a despairing father who doesn't know how to connect with the people that he's hurt in the past. It was exceptionally good. So those are the buddy reads. And the books that I've started, I think I'm, uh, I'm liking them all. The Helen Humphreys novel, Rabbit Foot Bill, set in 1947, small town Saskatchewan, is really good so far. I am uh, only 40 pages in. I hope to be farther along with my reading, but yesterday was almost a complete washout because of the news. But anyway, it doesn't matter. This is starting out really good, and it's about a crime, and I've gotten to the part where the crime happens, and I'm not going to tell you what it is, even though it's uh, described on the inside of the book flap, book book cover flap. But uh, anyway, it's definitely holding my interest. Helen Humphreys writes deceptively simple prose, as they say. There's a lot happening that you don't see on the level of the simple sentences she writes. Uh, gorgeous. And I'm really enjoying this one, this Japanese novel with the ugly cover, <laughs> The Twilight Years by Sawako Arioshi, published in about 1975 or something. 1984 in English. I don't know when the Japanese was published, translated from the Japanese by Mildred Tahera. It is a really strange book about a strange family, but their strangeness, having lived in Japan for 11 years, the strangeness really makes sense. I don't mean that this is a typical Japanese family, but the the weirdness here that's a bit off, it still fits within Japanese culture. Not that I am an expert, my God, but it's weird. Even though it's a conventional story about grandma dies one day of a stroke and what are they going to do with grandpa? But the characters and the conflicts between the characters that are and the way that those are expressed or not expressed, uh, never mind all of the Japanese tradition around death and some of these very Japanese characters are completely obtuse about the culture and are getting judged by other characters for not knowing every last nuance of what you're supposed to do when somebody dies. Fascinating. Absolutely fascinating. What I can tell you right now is that I really like it. I may end up loving it. It's engrossing. I like family stories and I like stories about death because it's a part of life, as they say. I will tell you one quick little anecdote. One of my students here in Japan many years ago, probably 10 years ago now, she told me that her grandma died when she was 104 and the grandma had lived with the family and so the night, the first night after the grandma's death, my student, who was a woman of about age 40 or something, she held her grandma's body in bed all night, cuddled with her dead grandma all night. And I thought it was really strange but beautiful and I didn't want to ask her too many questions about is this normal but she kind of intimated that it was now I've asked a few other Japanese people who said they'd never heard of anything like that but it, I, I just think that's really beautiful so there there's something there's a little Japanese anecdote out of the blue Snegorotchka by Judith Hennigan this is the one that I'm most in love with the prose the writing is really good and I'm probably more invested in this than anything else. In other words, I'm loving it. It's reminding me a little bit in tone of Rowan Hiseo Buchanan's second novel, which was called Starling Days, which I read and loved in 2019. This one is a little bit similar in that it's a young married couple living abroad. These, this couple are living in Ukraine. Not Ukraine, Ukraine. They're living in Ukraine in about 1992, which was a bit of a tumultuous time. We haven't got to the political tumult yet, but the wife joined with her newborn babies, joined her journalist husband, and she's not happy to be there. And the energy between them is so off, and I'm uncomfortable reading about how uncomfortable everybody is. So it's done really, really well. I don't know where the story is going, but she's, you know, she's got a three-month-old baby or something and the breastfeeding is causing her so much pain and she's just not really happy to be there and there's cockroaches in the apartment and she's being quite bitchy and I don't blame her but she it's me I'm scared of her <laughs> like she's just making everybody unhappy because she's unhappy and it's just really well done and her husband's kind of clueless you know man so it's just and the poor baby uh, I, and the yeah 
going shopping, not speaking the language. There's stuff I can relate to, and it's just really holding my interest. It's a, is it a sleeper from a couple of years ago. Other than Eric Carl Anderson, and I think all I saw in on his channel was as part of a book haul, I think. But it was, came out in 2019, and so far it's really capturing my interest. And this one is also really intriguing and probably the best written, the most literary writing of the bunch, and that is Tamarisk Grow by Gerald Murnane. Now, is it Murnane or Murnane? I'm sure it must be Murnane. This is an early novel of his that was reprinted. These editions by And Another Story Press are just gorgeous. The heaviest paper, you can hardly open the book. I just love the print job on this. And it's about a dad and a son who are into horse racing. The, the dad is virtually pro. I haven't quite figured out if he's also farming or if he's completely pro. But the way it's told in two-page long... Oh, I guess maybe, now that I look more closely, I'm pretty unobservant. No, each section, each chapter is one full paragraph. And I don't usually like it when there's no paragraph breaks, but the chapters are short. And the fact that it's one paragraph with the whole story, there's something about that structurally that I've never contemplated before. I don't like what a novel told in one paragraph, but a chapter in one paragraph when the chapters aren't too long. There's something about that structure that I've never thought about. I don't think I've ever encountered it before, but it's making me think about what, what is the effect that's achieved by no paragraph breaks in a short chapter. I don't have any words to put to it, but it's something that I'm paying attention to. And the writing is, I wouldn't say it's gorgeous. It's just the right level of literary intricacy to the prose that I am really enjoying it. I can't say yet that I love it, but there are some scenes in here about boys at school being bullies or mean to each other and stuff that are just powerful. Um, but there's a lot of stuff where it's, I'm feeling more detached from the material, like a novel about race horsing, horse racing, whatever it is. Couldn't be further from, you know, what floats my boat, but it's interesting to me. So I have a good feeling about this. And I said I told you about all the buddy reads, but what in fact I had, what I meant was I had told you about all of the short story collection buddy reads where I'm doing one a week. And so I have one more, and this is also a big hit so far, and that is this Indian novel. Furnas Kanga's Trying to Grow. This is a buddy read with Jatsna of Jatsna's Bookscapades. And we had our first check-in yesterday. I had two more chapters to read, and I managed to put once... It was well after midnight in the States and there didn't seem like there was going to be any other news. I could kind of turn the news off for a, an hour and, and finish the last two chapters. So we checked in on the first six chapters. I'm really liking it a lot. I think I'm probably going to end up loving it. The humor is wacky, but Indian humor is wacky. And I don't mean that in a judgmental way because I like wacky humor. But I had to make an adjustment to the fact that this family, this family of a mom and a dad and an older sister and the Ferdos Kanga character, Brit. It is a novel, but it's very autobiographical. The way they joke with each other is just extreme. And there's a rollickingness to it that I thought, is there any more to this story? I mean, it's about a serious subject. It's about this young guy he's he's we eventually get the story of his birth and everything but for most of these six chapters he's about six and maybe eight and i think by the very end maybe 12. and he's growing up with uh he's trying to grow he's because he's very very short because he has brittle bone disease which is the technical term is osteogenesis imperfecta so it's left him very short and unable to walk and his bones break incredibly easily they say in the story, and I'm assuming it's true in real life, that once the child grows to a certain age, matures to a certain age, the bones don't break so much. But the author, Fortis Kanga, is a short person. So there's that, but then there's all this humor and stuff. I had to get into it, and I once I got to some moving parts of the story where there was still humor, but I could see beneath it that, okay, no, this is a Sean book. This is definitely a Sean book. This might be my out-of-print book of the year that I'm not going to be shutting up about. And I think there's only one more that is ebook. 
Oh no, I have two more. Sorry, I have. Oh, I have three more. What the hell am I talking about? See, I am just frazzled today. I have two audiobooks and the ebook. I'll do the ebook first. It's the one about indigenous history in Western Canada with that awful title Liberalism, Surveillance, and Resistance Indigenous Communities in Western Canada, 1877 to 1927 by Keith D. Smith. And I am at the, it's not the introduction, but it's kind of like the chapter one is kind of an introduction of the theory. And the theory is Foucault. And I can't stand Foucault, but I've realized reading about his theories for the first time, again, for the first time in a couple decades, that it's not the theories, it's just the intellectual jargon of it all. But I'm actually seeing why his well, his famous theory about the prison there's a there's a particular word where the prison guard you can see into everybody's room panopticon is that what it is and it's being used for colonial history and one of the things that colonialism is all about is just kind of tracking and keeping tabs on the colonized peoples in this case the indigenous peoples of western canada i'm open to it but i'm finding reading all this theoretical stuff it's not stupid i just don't like reading that kind of jargon so i'm looking forward to getting past it getting as much as i can from it and then getting into the meat of the historical information so that's in progress and going quite well and yes i have started two audiobooks i have started volume two of clarissa the 100 hour audiobook i'm on volume two which is 34 hours this is the 1758 novel by samuel richardson I've, i haven't listened to very much but it's going great i missed it i'm happy to be back with clarissa and i picked up another one and this one was a bit of a risk because i found out about this writer in this novel because the writer found well, i think one of my sunday sentences on twitter and started following me and i happened to look at his bio and he has a debut novel that came out in 2020 and i started listening to it on audio but i'm always nervous when i'm reading a book by somebody who's following me i don't know that he's following my youtube channel we'll soon find out but he's following me on twitter so i've listened to enough of it i'm t almost 20 percent of the way in that i know that i'm like gonna like it and that i'm gonna probably finish it it's the miseducation of Evie Epworth by Matson Taylor, and he is a queer writer from the UK, and this is a really fun story about a 16-year-old girl, motherless girl, whose father has taken up with a new girlfriend that she doesn't like. It's mostly told in her voice, and the audio book is really good, like the narration is good, and I'm emotionally invested now. It's very funny wickedly funny prose really excellent writing but i wasn't sure if it was going to be a sean book and i think it's going to be enough that i will tell you about it so that i don't have to have an automatic bail tweet sent out from goodreads that this guy this writer is going to see my early reaction is good enough that i don't think that's going to happen so yeah i'm enjoying it that's the Edu miseducation of evie epworth by matson taylor so what do you think? Is that enough going on? <laughs> There's still a couple short story collections, bigger anthologies that have carried over from 2020. I might as well mention those. The Golden Age of British Short Stories, 1890 to 1914, edited by Philip Hencher. I'm a quarter of the way through that in a weekly buddy read with Joe Smith. And the buddy read of the Joyce Carol Oates humongous selection, High Lonesome, Selected Stories, 1966 to 2006. The Buddy Read didn't continue, but I am still reading it, but fairly slowly, like not even necessarily every week, and I'm 20% of the way through that. So that is what's on my reading plate. I will probably finish some stuff in the coming week, unless there's more breaking news that upsets my rhythm. But I don't know what I'm going to start, and I'll keep you in suspense. I will say that the, the six books, plus all the other stuff thing it's going well but i'm also feeling antsy i don't feel like i'm reading enough books isn't that weird and and part of it comes from the fact that the reason that i'm a book slut and i've talked about this many times is that i don't like finishing books too quickly because they don't get imprinted so i like picking up a book and reading 10 pages and putting it down for 48 hours and picking it up and reading a whole bunch of books facilitates that and because of that process i remember books much more 
deeply than if I inhale them. And so I'm feeling weird about I'm reading six books and I'm dipping into most of them every day. Only 10 pages, so it's probably okay, but I feel uncomfortable. So I was telling Joe in a Voxer message the other day, I feel like I kind of want to pick up one more short story anthology, not as a buddy read, but just as another something else that I can read, just so I make sure that I'm progressing slowly. I'm weird. You don't have to tell me. I know. So that's what I have, lovely people. Everybody stay safe. Stay positive. Let's defund the police. Fight racism. And read good books. Thanks for watching.